Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Sakura Spirit. We continue off after having just, uh, well, an interesting little incident in the bedroom. After that little incident, we relocated to the kitchen. The smell of food filled the air. Uh, that's not what I'm looking for. Despite the younger girl's easygoing attitude, always humming some cheerful melody, I found my cheeks still burning from embarrassment. To think that a girl would say such a thing. I quickly shook my, shook my head to clear the thoughts from my mind and turns towards the elder sister. The soup is delicious. Is Mako usually the one doing the cooking around here? Yay! I'm glad you like it, Takahiro. I don't usually cook, so I made a few lucky guesses. It is rather delicious, Mako. Perhaps you could do more cooking from now on. It would allow me more time to lounge around. Well, the first step to getting your wedding sash is to become a good housewife, and that includes cooking. Ooh, Takahiro going traditional Japanese. I added this with a bit of amusement, following Machiko's comment. I took another sip of the soup. For a few lucky guesses, the dish had turned out pretty well. Hmm, that's true. I'll learn how to clean, and I'll cook for you, and I don't know what else, but it'll be fun learning. Mako, you should stop that. You know very well it would be pointless for you to marry him. Only the villagers know how to craft a wedding sash, and we both know this would not happen. That's not necessarily true, Machiko. It only becomes more evident that you are not of this world, Taka. The villagers do not tolerate our existence. They despise us. We could never ask such a favor of them. All we have to do is find them some way to make the villagers accept you. But I guess I'll need to learn more about the village itself before we can do that. The pale-haired woman shook her head slowly, her ears flattening against her head as she did. It is not that simple. They would never trust us. Humans and fox spirits have never been able to get along. I'm honestly surprised that you've been able to tolerate us this long. Ooh, self-loathing there, Machiko. I would be happy to be proven wrong, and you are free to stay as long as you wish, until, of course, you too grow weary of our ways and decide to leave. Pity party, jeez. Please don't say things like that. Takahiro wouldn't do that, would you, Takahiro? Of course not. I wouldn't abandon somebody just because they're a little... Oh, they're a different species? Ah, I get different species. That's not the way Gushiken Takahiro does things. However, I do remember that the village elder telling me that it wasn't just the fox spirits. It sounded like humans and spirits everywhere had been on bad terms for a long time. Do you know why, Machiko? I do not recall. Much information is withheld even from someone such as myself. Most spirits keep to themselves these days. There are a few exceptions, Tsuyuri being one of them. Powerful spirits come and go as they please, but they tend to remain in their world. Fox spirits, however, have no other place to go. We are stuck in the human world, for better or for worse. Huh? I didn't realize it was like that. I guess I'm finally learning stuff. Well, this Tsuyuri character lives in the shrine, right? We should try asking her for some ideas. Ooh, did you see the dark and... Nah, no, 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 no need to go see her. Absolutely not. No, I don't want to see her. I don't want to. I was somewhat taken aback by Machiko's suddenly, chi suddenly childish way of speaking. It reminded me of the times I had been told to go and visit the doctor when I was younger, complaining and throwing tantrums along the way. But isn't she the only one who can help us? I refuse to go. Tsuyuri is a fiend, and I dislike the idea of spending even a second in her presence. She can't be that bad, can she? Besides, if anything happens, I'll protect you. Fine. If it really means that much to you, I will attempt to lead you to the shrine again. But you will enter the grounds alone. I, I don't want to go anywhere near that place. You will be on your own, Taka. Can I come? Absolutely not. I forbid it. You are not to follow us under any circumstances, Mako. Fine, I'll just stay here, just like you said. I'll be here, in the mansion. All alone. Unprotected. All by myself. Who knows what might happen to me, 
I could get trapped under a bookcase and die. Or slip on a banana peel and die. Or get bored and die of boredom. I'd be so super duper bored sitting here all alone in the same place day in and day out. How far away is this place? Fine, fine, I get it. You may come along, but you must be on your best behavior. No running around and no talking unless spoken to. Ooh, harsh. Chico breaking down the ground rules. Okay. Despite Mako's cheerfulness, I could not help but wonder what had happened between Machiko and this Tsuyuri for her to react so strongly. I decided that maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to spend some time with the two sisters to get to know them a little bit better. Well, I do have two weeks until I need to get back to my own world, so there's really no need to rush. How about we do something else instead? I'm sure Machiko, Machiko wouldn't mind the distraction. Hmm... Well, the longer I get to stay away from that place, the better. How about bringing Mako to fetch some desserts for us? There are oranges, apples, and a small vineyard behind the mansion. I could whip some up some cream to go with it if you would like. Sure, that sounds easy enough. Let's go get us some delicious fruit, Mako. Alright. As Mako led me towards the garden of the impressive mansion, she seemed a little quiet, as though she had something on her mind. I wanted to ask her about it, but... Something about the way her ears sagged and her tail hung low told me it probably wasn't the best idea. I decided I would simply try to cheer her up. So, which do you prefer, Mako? Apples, grapes, or oranges? We could gather all three, but I bet we can grab a few for ourselves first. Apples, I guess? I knew a fox spirit once, a friend of my sister, who loved apples. I can't remember her name, though. I guess my head's a bit hollow. Apples are awesome. Crunchy on the outside and sweet on the inside. Nah, apples suck. And your head isn't hollow, silly. If that were true, I'd still be stuck in that jail cell. Sister did most of the thinking, though. I just sort of went along with what she said. Well, someone had to take the lead. Besides, I'm still grateful for all the help, all the same. How about... I playfully flicked Mako's forehead with a grin. See? Doesn't sound hollow at all. I'm sure there are plenty of clever thoughts in that pretty little head of yours. Ah, meanie. Ah, now you know I'm right, at least. Anyway, let's go get those apples, shall we? Okay, I'll get them, I'll get them. You grab that basket over there. Alright, let's get down to business. Feeling hyped. Ooh, hyped for apple picking. What low standards you have, Taka. I went to grab one of the baskets stacked nearby and returned to Mako, who had started climbing one of the trees. The girl looked accustomed to climbing, but her small hands had me a bit worried. Hanging from the branch with just her legs, she checked to see if the apples were ripe. Mako, be careful. You might slip. Ow! The girl had thrown an apple at me, and while my reflexes let me catch it with an ease, the force behind it still stung my palm a little. Oh, you crybaby. Of course, I did exaggerate a bit for the girl. Ha! Huh. I'll be fine, Taka. I've been climbing these trees all my life. Even the most experienced climbers end up running into trouble if they aren't careful. I smiled weakly at the girl's excited attitude, placing the apple I caught into the basket. You don't know what you're talking about. I'm a fox spirit. I won't fall. I'm super, super careful. Watch. I'll grab the apples near the top. Wait, Mako. Unless you can fly, I don't think you should go for those. Fly? I can't do that, silly Taka. Who ever heard of a flying fox spirit? Ah! As expected, the moment Mako tried to reach for one of the apples near the top of the tree, the girl ended up losing her footing and tumbled down towards the ground with a loud cry. Mako! Uh... Dude, you need to stop bragging about your reflexes. I don't think they're that good. My reflexes quickly kicked themselves into gear, trying to catch the girl before she hit the ground. Unfortunately, I didn't notice the apple scattered around the tree, and as a result, ended up tripping over them. I managed another few steps, and was able to catch Mako before I dropped to the ground. Um... So you 
tripped on an apple and you're supposed to be doing judo, Taka, man, balance is everything. My head was throbbing once I had recovered from the fall. I tried to sit up, but found myself held down by a small but substantial weight. Oh, you want to tell her that to your face there? Substantial weight? Opening my eyes, I looked to see Mako sitting on my lap. Ow, I guess I tried to reach a bit too far. Thank you, Takahiro, you saved me. And you gave me a soft, well, sort of soft and kind of hard landing. Uh, what? Mako, do, do you mind your, uh, crushing me? Yeah, oh my gosh. Takahiro, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. As the younger girl grew increasingly flustered, I knew I had to calm her down. Gently, I tilted my legs beneath her, and she toppled forwards, her head resting against my chest. I guess we've learned that fox spirits can be pretty clumsy. Or maybe that Mako is even cuter up close than I had thought. Well, uh, Takahiro, I think you're mistaking me for... No, I'm talking about you. You have that innocent side to you that's really charming. I wouldn't be surprised if lots of people from the village would want to claim you as their adorable little sister once we've cleared up those misunderstandings. Hmm. I'd be happy to call you my brother, Takahiro, but lots of people in that village are super mean. I just want to spend my time with you and sister. Brother? How about... Darling? <laughs> Darling! I don't think I'm... I know if I'm ready for that. Really? I think we'd be a cute couple. A hero and a fox spirit, living happily ever after. Your sister could stay too. We could raise a little family. I mean, we're al we already have a house, so probably wouldn't have to worry about that. And any guy from my world would kill to have a pretty wife like you. Talk a hero, laying it on thick. I held back a chuckle, knowing all too well that my teasing was taking effect, and yet I was also happy to see her spirits seemingly lifted. Uh, thank you, Taka? I think Taka... <laughs> Without the, uh... Not prefixes, uh... Honorifics. This sentence makes no sense, but whatever. I think Taka would be better. Machiko probably wouldn't like another sibling, but I'm glad I cheered you up. You didn't seem too happy earlier. The way your tails and ear tail and ears were hanging low reminded me of a scolded puppy. A substantial way to puppy, jeez, man. You just you're all over the map. Make up your mind. Huh? Oh, right. I was just thinking is all. You know, about that spell I wanted to try. The one that needs the silky wedding undies? Wedding sash. It's kind of like a belt that the bride wears during the wedding ceremony. I doubt any sort of spell involving... <laughs> panties would be a good idea to cast. Eh, I don't know. Oh! I thought it was like... Uh, w what you wear on your wedding night. Anyway, the spell. I don't know why, but I wanted to try it for a little while now. And, well, it's a gate spell. Not like those temporary ones. Those are easy to make. A permanent one, like a portal to a different place. Hmm. Sounds interesting, but are you sure it's safe? Silly Taka, that's not the point. This spell, I might be able to help you. Uh, Mako, if it's not safe, you're not helping anybody. That's entirely the point. Well, that's good and all. I'd prefer to end, not end up in the middle of the sea or a live volcano. I think we should be a little more careful with your magic. Yeah, that's right, Taka. You tell her. Hm. I'm a good mage. That's what Harry said when he told Atlantis he had a solution to their water shortage. I'm not sure I get that reference. Huh? What's Atlantis? A city with high ambitions, sunk into the deep due to poor management. Anyway, I think it's best if we go get an expert's opinion before we try anything. We're going to visit this Tsuyuri anyway, so maybe she'll be able to tell us if your spell will get me home. Hmm, but Tsu told me I shouldn't use magic at all. 
She said it was only for her to use or something. Hmm. Maybe she had a reason for saying that? Like, maybe... I don't know. Do spells have side effects? I'm breaking out the, uh... Dungeon and Dragon here. Dungeons and Dragons here. Hmm. You're just like sister. She forbid me, too, but I showed her that spells could be helpful and that I can control them, so she let me do more research. I'm not gonna throw spells around like they're nothing. I'm not a dumb little kid. That is to be determined there, Mako. I'm not gonna do anything. Besides, you seem old enough to take care of yourself. N not that I know how old someone like you might be, but... Beware the dark side of the force. I mean, the magic. In most stories, magic usually comes with a price. Like... <laughs> like, what would you do if magic gave you a terrible tummy ache, or headaches, or worse, diarrhea? Then you'd better propel a gate spell to the nearest bathroom. Eh, I do get headaches, but those aren't really all that big a deal. And I get to do a lot of things for sister. I'm not gonna change that ever, so there. I already said I wasn't gonna make you do anything. However, you, uh, what you do need to change is the fact that you're straddling me and, um, you're rather close. So I'd appreciate it if you could get off. Oh, but you're so warm and soft. I could just curl up and sleep on you. Wait, don't go falling asleep on me. <laughs> just kidding. I wouldn't do that something like, something like that out here. Maybe tonight, though. It's only fair since sister got to do it. But, more importantly, dessert! We need to get back inside. Sister's probably wondering what's taking so long. Couldn't really argue with the girl's impeccable logic. Mm, what impeccable logic? I'm not sure I saw any logic there. With a smile, I helped the girl to her feet and gathered a few fallen apples into the basket. We returned to Machiko and enjoyed our dessert together. It wasn't too long after that that Mako started to feel sleepy. So Machiko, Machiko took her to bed, wishing me a good night. The next morning. And it's a bit short, but since this is a natural breaking point in the story, I think I will call it a part here. When we come back next time, we'll continue. Day after, day two of being in this strange world with particularly strange foxes. Till next time, guys. Later.